All right. Well, Fergie, I know, I know you grew up in um, Phil Philadelphia. I know you're a Phillies fan, but uh, you know, back when I was growing up in New York, we had a team called the Mets. And we had this show after, after um, each game where Ralph Kiner would have this TV show. He was the, one of the commentators, and he, it was called Kiner's Corner. So uh, you're you're going to be the first guest ever in history in Cupola's Cupola Corner. Cupola Corner. So, <laughs> okay. so right. here we are. So so I'm I'm with uh, Captain Chris Ferguson, the uh, commander of the last space shuttle flight uh, of Atlantis, which I don't think you can see, but it's behind us. I think it's too bright to to see. But we're in the cupola. Uh, we have the Earth uh, above us, so we're kind of upside down with Atlantis docked for the last time. Uh, at the International Space Station. So, Chris, I, I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, what, what this means to you. What do you think about, uh, you know, the, the last flight and, and the legacy of the space shuttle? Well, um, you know, first of all, I think it's it's sad to see the shuttle go away. It, it really is. This is just it's a it's a beautiful vehicle. I'm sure you're having probably a hard time with the exposure behind us, but uh, it's it's just been a fantastic tool for the United States to uh, really uh, set up a, a permanent. Uh, like presence in, in low Earth orbit. You know, we deploy great observatories. We learn how to do spacewalks. Uh, we built, you know, the better part of the International Space Station. I think 37 shuttle flights were devoted towards building this. And as we kind of swim around the halls here, we notice that it's a lot wider uh, than the Russian segment. And if it, were not, if it wasn't for the space shuttle, the space station might be a, a skinny set of tubes. Uh, Kind of like the Russian segment is, so it, it's enabled us to build a space station that, that's robust and large. So uh, we're going to miss this. We really are. I think one of the things we're going to miss the most is is our ability to bring things back. Uh, what you may not be able to see behind us is a failed pump that uh, that broke on the space station um, probably about nine months ago, and we repaired it with a spare that was on board. But we're going to bring the failed one home. Uh, we're going to do a, a post mortem on it. We're going to find out what make what made it fail, so we can make it better. Uh, and we can make things last a long, long time. So we're going to miss our ability to bring things back from low Earth orbit. So, you know, if you talk about the shuttle's legacy, I, I talk about it in terms of things that we won't have uh, when it's gone. Um, now, we're going to build new rockets, and we're going to have the ability to bring things back again someday, but never the, the kind of down mass, we call it, that, that the space shuttle has given us. Thanks for that. Well, you know, it's I, and when we're we're done talking, we'll bring the camera over there, and I think it'll expose right, and we'll be able to see it. But the, the, another question, I want, or the last question I wanted to ask you is, one of the purposes of Fragile Oasis is to use the orbital perspective to inspire people to make a difference and improve our planet. I, I just wanted to ask you what that means to you. I mean, when you look at the Earth, and you know, how could we, you know, communicate what we see? in a way that would inspire people to make a difference. Yeah, I'm looking up because, you know, the, the view is absolutely breathtaking. I mean, you, you have to pinch yourself from time to time to really understand exactly what it is, you know, where you are. I mean, this is incredible to be 220 miles over the Earth, looking down, watching the Earth go by at, at five miles per second. And you, as you do, you look down, you realize that, you know, you really can't see country boundaries. You see uh, evidence of human life. But, but you really, you see a, a beautiful planet with contours and clouds in the ocean. It's, a, it's an ocean of clouds that has different perspectives to it, and it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. But you do realize how fragile it is um, as, a, uh, as, as a result of, you know, the thin little atmosphere that we look at. It's just a wafer-thin atmosphere in this, this large ocean of space that we're in and, and how kindly we need to treat it. Uh, or, uh, or perhaps it won't be treating us very kindly uh, for generations to come. Well, thanks, Fergie. I appreciate that. And we will end this with a view out the window of this beautiful spacecraft. I hope. Yeah. So you can see the little smoke palls, smoke trails where uh, where where fires are. Oh, and yeah. You can see oh, how they just uh, they add. Uh, you know that that whole cloudiness right there is really due to smoke, and it's not a cloud, and y and you can tell. And these little in these little ways, you can tell how mankind is is having an impact on our our environment. Yeah. There's your spacecraft out there. It's beautiful, isn't it? There, there you go. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I never thought I'd have this perspective of a space shuttle before. And uh, we're so fortunate because so very few have had this perspective. Let's see, this has been here now for, came up on 130, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, six shuttle crews.
have been fortunate enough to be able to view their shuttle in just this way. And uh, I consider myself blessed to have done it. All right. Thanks, Bertie. Hey, sure thing. Godspeed. Good landing. All right. Yeah.